We've got a real treat for you today. Our friend Daniel Dierko, who's a commercial photographer and filmmaker who focuses on movement and action and also makes killer YouTube videos. is here to demystify studio lighting for you. First, we want to thank Audible for sponsoring this channel. We love books, but we rarely have time to read, which is one of the reasons why we love using Audible. We can listen to our favorite books like The House on Mango Street, When We're on a Road Trip, At Work, Wherever. One of our favorite books on Audible is The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. It's narrated by Brian Cranston, which makes it incredibly enjoyable to listen to. Right now, you can select any audiobook you want for free when you sign up for a free 30-day trial. Oh, and you get to keep the audiobook regardless of whether or not you continue your memberships, so you have nothing to lose. Just go to audible.com slash mango street to get started. A big misconception in shooting with studio lighting is that you need these big expensive packs. Surprise, mother... And flashes to do the entire job. And also when you get them, you have to use the entire power that it contains, which is not the case at all. So I have here a flash that's 600 watts, but you can actually do a lot of the stuff in this video using speed lights. And my whole thing is, if there are people out there like Joe McNally shooting editorial jobs and everything with speed lights their entire career, you can use one flash and get a lot done. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to shoot and balance natural light and flash by prioritizing the natural light first. But we're gonna be doing that using the exposure, not triangle, but the diamond. Your number one priority should always be exposing for what you know. So what do we know here? In most cases, is natural light or ambient light. You have the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. You start with the definitives. You build atop that foundation. Then afterwards, you add this fourth corner, which I like to call the diamond, and that is flash. When you're exposing and adding the flash, you really want it to be more of a fill light. Keep in mind that after you expose using all these three, your shutter speed has a maximum sync speed, which is the max speed that it can synchronize with an external flash of 1 60th to 2 50th of a second. Now we're gonna talk about lighting modifiers and the why behind them. So when you're shooting with a female, large soft window, and a nice environment, it's important to keep things consistent. What I mean by that is this is nice soft window light. I wanna have nice soft light on the model. I have a very large five foot octa, and the reason I chose that is because it's a large light source. The thing to note here is the larger the surface area of the light, the softer it is. If I were to push this guy back 30 feet away, this actually becomes as hard as the direct sunlight itself. If I were to reel in the sun, pull it to earth, it might burn down you know, the world, but you have nice soft light in the process because it's so big. I'm shooting with the Panasonic GH5 right now because that's what I have today, and that's all you really need. So I have a really beautiful glowy light coming from the window, but the only thing is when she's looking down this way, the shadows here are a little bit too hard for me. So the fall off is a bit too much, I wanna add in some fill light, and I'm starting this soft box, or this octa box, right where this highlight ends in this midsection. So as soon as the light falls off here, I add in a nice soft light, and then it falls off here instead. One thing that I always do whenever I'm shooting wide open is I start with the power level really, really low. So right now it's at, I think, 128th power. And the, the important thing is, you don't wanna overdo the flash right when you throw it in the mix, from this way. For men, you can definitely do the exact same soft light setup if you want to, but for a lot of guys, they kind of want to look badass and they want to look a little bit tougher. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually using hard light, just like I mentioned at the last point. This light relative to this subject is a lot smaller, so it's going to produce harder shadows, uh, more contrasty looks, it's going to be a lot more moody. Let's recap. Remember guys, lighting is only hard if you don't keep it simple. Always prioritize one light source first, which in this video was natural light. Have a go-to hard light setup and a go-to soft light setup. From here, you can default to either of the two extremes 
and then average out what you want from there. Everybody who is interested in studio lighting but hasn't experimented with it yet, I urge you to do exactly that, experiment. Again, it's a valuable tool to have, not just because your clients might want it, but because you'll be such a badass with light that you can do almost any look you want, anytime. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of Daniel's work, check him out on Instagram and be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe to our monthly newsletter where we share current inspiration and feature one of our subscribers, if you want one of these cool Carlton t-shirts, or if you want any of our presets or lets that we've created, check out the links below. We'll see you guys next week. The exposure triangle. Triangle, I said triangle. <laughs> exposure diamond. Ha, ha, ha.